Kopperzaal, 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 kopperzaal. Hey Maplers, Copperstand hier. Today we're getting one of the most busted classes in the game to level 200, the Angelic Buster. I hope you like being in the spotlight, because this class does some crazy damage. Like always, we're starting our adventure in Edelstein, training at the low level monsters until we reach level 20, and after that we go to the monsters near the entrance of the Vern Mine. Angelic Buster has an amazing link skill that increases skill damage for a short duration. So she's a really useful character to get at least to level 120. Angelic Buster has no MP, however some of her skills require a charged soul battery. But don't worry, by the time you're level 140 you can basically ignore the entire mechanic. You can check at the bar at the right side of your screen if your soul battery is charged or not. Or you know, if you can't attack then that's probably why. Her basic attack is sort of a hurricane skill that can be held down constantly shooting and doing damage. Really useful to train at earlier levels. Angelic Buster's first job attacking skill is called Start Bubble. We're off to a good start because this skill already does 500% damage. It does one line of damage though, and if your battery is empty you can't use it. But using this skill has a 70% chance to recharge the soul battery. Angelic Buster is not a class that does like a ton of lines, but instead does only a couple of lines but with crazy high damage. In the first job you'll also get your first buff called Melody Cross, which is basically weapon booster but it also passively increases your HP. And Affinity Heart 1 and you'll see this skill returning every job advancement. Affinity Heart 1 is a passive skill this time that increases recharge rate, speed, jump and max speed. So we reached level 30 and instead of going to our usual spot, I went hunting in Angelic Buster's hometown Pantheon. We went to the Anti-Magic Force, the monsters here are level 40. Angelic Buster has a hook skill that they learn as a beginner, which is pretty useful to get to high ground. In second job we get a new level of Affinity Heart, Affinity Heart 2, super original. Every 10 enemies you defeat there is a 100% chance to recharge, and you get some more resistances as well. Next up is Power Transfer, this skill converts 1% of damage done into a shield, and this shield absorbs half the damage you receive. The max value of the shield is your max HP, making Angelic Buster a tanky girl. We move to Gold Beach to train at the clams there, since these monsters skill with you and the map layout is pretty nice. Another one of Angelic Buster's second job skills is Pink Pummel. This is a rush skill that does 480% damage. It only does one hit though, but it has a 20% recharge chance as well. Your other attacking skill is called Lovely Sting, which does 600% damage and leaves a debuff that can be detonated again to do the same amount of damage. That's double the damage for one skill. We're not doing insane amount of damage yet though, Angelic Buster needs to skill up a little bit more until the late game. After 4 job advancements she becomes a lot stronger. We train at Copper Sandrix in Sleepywood to reach level 60 and 3rd job. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more content. Last video we got 1000 likes, thank you so much for that. We move to Stairway to the Sky 1 in Orbis with a set of new skills. We get a new attacking skill called Heavenly Crash. This skill launches enemies in the air and can be linked with Shining Starburst. This skill does increased damage against monsters launched by Heavenly Crash, so it's a great follow-up skill. We get a new buff that increases knockback duration and a new Affinity Heart skill. This time if your recharge fails twice in a row, you will recharge anyway. And you get additional dex and damage. And finally Soul Seeker, which creates orbs that do damage and the orbs can recreate themselves with an 85% chance. This skill is amazing for additional DPS at bosses. After reaching level 79, we slide our way into the Nihil Desert to train at the Desert Rabbits. We stay here until we reach level 90, so we can get to level 100 from Zaku. But uh, yeah, things didn't really go as planned, because uh, I died. And when you die, you lose all your EXP buffs. I mean, in the end, we did defeat Zaku, but we just didn't reach level 100. So I was booted back to the desert to train there for a couple of more levels until we reach level 100 at Sunset Road 2. We reach 4 job right now, and this is where Angelic Bossa truly starts to shine. You get Affinity Heart 4, which basically is an infinite recharge at max level. So we no longer have to worry about the soul battery or recharging, you can just fire away your attacks, no problemo. We also get a nice spin to win skill called Soul Renaissance. This skill sucks in enemies, deals plenty of damage, and when the skill finishes, it deals a whooping 3000% damage in one giant explosion. When using the skill, you also get less damage from monsters, and the skill deals more damage against bosses. Angelic Buster takes skill damage to the extremes really. Her main attacking skill, Celestial Roar, does 1160, that's 1160% damage, two times and stuns the enemies. If you put a little bit of funding into her, this class can easily one-shot any monster. Like, get some Star Force, a nice Fafnir weapon with some epic potential and the rest of the Fafnir set and you're basically good to go. 
Angelic Buster also gets a skill called Final Ribbon. This skill deals 4000% damage at max level and leaves a debuff that increases your damage against the enemy monster as well. It's a great opening skill for bosses and yeah, 4000% damage guys. If you like seeing high damage numbers, this is your class. There is also Soul Seeker Expert, which is a toggle on off skill. Having this skill on will summon Soul Seeker orbs when attacking every now and then. They deal a little bit less damage than the real deal, but it's a, again a great skill to have and I just have this on always. Stargazer is another skill that increases your critical damage. Angelic Buster deals crazy amounts of crit damage, so make sure you get 100% crit rate through Link skills and Legion for maximum damage. And finally Trinity, which is an attack that can be cast up to 3 times, increasing the amount of lines with each cast, and it passively increases final damage and enemy defense ignore as well. Now don't forget to do your daily 2 free monster park runs every day, and use the coins to get 10% EXP potions, attack speed potions, and weapon attack potions. We reached level 110, and we went down to dual ghost pirates in Lidibrium. We're almost level 120, and you can already almost do 1 million damage per line. I'm dropping some gear on this character by the way. I got a Fafnir set, a Power Crystal, Aquatic Ice Accessory, you know, most of the items from the boss set, nothing too crazy. Later, once I reach level 150, I will be using a Fafnir weapon with 9% attack potential as well. I also took my revenge against Zakum, I really hate him for ruining my XP buffs. At level 121, I went to Gigantic Spirit Vikings. The map layout is pretty similar to the Dual Ghost Pirates, plus they have the best death sound effect of any monster in the game. <laughs> If we crit, we can already do 2.5 million damage at this point, which basically one-shots these monsters. And if they don't die, then usually Soul Seeker will just finish them off. I stayed in this map until I reached level 130. After that, I went to Junior Cerebus in the Death Mine near Sakum. Since we do spend some muscle on this character, we have enough Star Force to go to all the Star Force maps, so that's where we'll be going. This map has a very nice spawn rate and we barely get any damage thanks to Angelic Buster's shield. Trading here goes really fast, even without any EXP buffs. Also, I really love that hawk riding skill that we get with the pixel event. It really helps us fly through the map, plus we do like 10 million damage when riding it. Damage numbers go big really fast. Just wait until you see Final Ribbon by the way, that skill is even more crazy. Every 3 levels, I moved one map to the right. So at level 136, I went to Cerebus and stayed there until I reached level 140. At this point, we could wear some of the new gear and we got a bit stronger. I'm still using my level 110 weapon at this point that I just found from some monsters. So yeah, keep that in mind. Defeating bosses like normal Horntail is also no problem for Angelic Buster. I went in at level 140, leveled up twice from this boss and after defeating normal Horntail it was time to continue training at Dark Wyvern in Leifrith. This is a really big Star Force map where you can make use of Angelic Buster's hook skill to move around pretty easily. At level 140 we also start unlocking the Hyper skills. We have the awesome Supreme Inferno which is a great mobbing skill that lasts 12 seconds and has a 60 second cooldown. It lays out a sort of a black hole on the map that deals damage on a fixed spot and just stays there for like 12 seconds, it's crazy. There is Final Contract, which you unlock the latest, and this skill increases attack power, crit rate, knockback resistance, elemental resistance and status resistance for 30 seconds and has a 120 second cooldown. And finally, Pretty Exhalation, which increases enemy defense ignored and boss damage. Plus it increases the chance to trigger another of those Soul Seeker balls, and who doesn't like more balls? This skill has a 30 second duration and a 120 second cooldown as well. We reach level 150 which means we can finally equip our Fafnir gear. Now we can really hurt some monsters. We move to the Stanfors area in Kurian Square and as you can see we're already doing 12 million damage per attack. Even Messenger of Darkness are like what the hell is this? Now at this point I want to speed things up, you know, we've been pl I've been playing on and off for a couple of days, you know, training here and there, and I wanted to speed things up, so we got a 2x EXP card from the cash shop, a regular 2x EXP bonus card, and a Fury Totem from the reward shop. The Fury Totem increases spawn rate, so we can train even faster. We move to the Hydra than Showa, at level 160 in this map it takes around 3 minutes to level up with all these EXP buffs. The Supreme Inferno is a great skill to place at the point where the mobs are spawned, because they will just die over and over, getting you so much EXP. And the final ribbon is already doing 20 million damage per line now. Yeah, 20 million damage at level 161. That's right. We stayed in this map until we reached level 170. Then we went to the aliens in the Omega sector. While training here I thought to myself, wow, those aliens sure are strong, I can't even two-shot them. But uh, yeah, I didn't realize they didn't even have enough Star Force. Angelic Buster does so much damage, like technically you wouldn't even need the Star Force. You can just kill them with lower level Star Force, easy peasy. But since we want to, you know, train at maximum efficiency, I did Star Force the rest of my gear and now I have enough Star Juice to deal a lot more damage. We went from doing 3 million, 4 million lines to 6 million, 8 million lines. 
Thanks, Mr. Starforce. At level 180, I went to the Forsaken Excavation site in Future Pyrian because we are a big girl and we can handle ourselves. We could almost always one-shot those monsters at level 191. Just needed to level up a little bit more and we were good. Supreme Inferno also really helps with training in this map. You can clear out almost the entire map with this skill. I saw some boss monsters giving me like a funny look and I didn't like that. So I killed normal Horntail, the normal Root Abyss bosses and all that jazz again. You know, that's what they get for uh, existing. It's time to hit the big 200, and also, cooldown potion runes are absolutely broken on this class. We reach level 200, we talk to our perfect dragon job instructor dude, and get a few more skills that increase his mastery, and we finish the 5th job advancement quest, unlocking 3 new skills. We get a mighty mascot, which changes our job advancement dragon into a smaller dragon that will support us with additional attacks. He reminds me a little bit of that old priest dragon summon. Every now and then, the dragon will fire off an attack that explodes upon impact. And if you use the skill again and hold the button down, it will turn into a freaking flamethrower. There is Sparkle Burst, which summons a giant heart that can be filled up with stars and sparkles by attacking monsters. Use the skill again to explode the heart and blow up the entire map. And finally, Superstar Spotlight. This skill summons three spotlights, and if the light hits you, you'll get increased damage and certain resistances get buffed. Plus, they deal 416% damage three times against each monster hit. And by the way, this buff counts for every light, so if every light, single light hits you, you'd get a ton of damage increase. And that's Angelic Buster! Many thanks to our members for making this video possible. Thanks to Quinn, Niels de Comic, Raar Maar Waar, Zenny, Shen125, Raferum, Krauker, The Purple Flurp, and Paroxius Gaming. If you'd like to be mentioned here as well and get early access to new videos, check out the join button under this video. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and happy mapling!